Don't miss out on our new videos by subscribing Logic Heap and pressing the bell icon. Hello friends, welcome to Logic Heap. In the last tutorial, we saw how we can handle collisions in hashing using separate chain method. Today we'll see its implementation in Python and after this tutorial you should be able to write its code. So see it very carefully. Firstly, we'll see from the user's perspective that what user may need from our class. So what user want to do is, user has some key value pairs. Okay, one thing is user may want to insert new key value pairs or user gives you a key, you need to search value specific to it. Okay, so user will create an object of your class. Let's name your class as chain hash map. User will create its object and put it reference in some variable. It is my hash map here. Now user may want to set these values, right? So how do they set it? My hash map key. Okay, you are using the index operator. This is the index operator and you are putting the key here. At this place, they are giving logic. Okay, so this value they are setting. Similarly, all the values they may want to insert in hash table. Okay, second thing is they may want to access the value they'll give you key here. So using the index operator, they have put key 88 here and you have to return value specific to it. So you should return marry. Okay, in value you should have the reference to marry. One thing before implementing you should know is if you want to use this index operator over your object then you need to implement set item because internally this gets converted to set item where this value becomes the key and this becomes the value okay. This is just the thing to show you but internally it gets converted to this. Similarly this gets converted or calls this method so your class should have this method defined key okay so if you want these index operator to work correctly you need to define these two things set item and get item these are the getters and setters when you want to use the index operator over your class's object now you understand what all user demands from your class okay so you will define a class chain hash map you will write the constructor okay We'll soon discuss what we'll keep in the constructor. Then you need to define set item. You need to define get item. Okay. Now one more thing in the last class we discussed is about the load factor. If you are not clear with load factor and rehashing, see the previous tutorial. There we have discussed about it. What we discussed lambda is the ratio lambda or load factor is the ratio of your input size and your capacity of your hash table okay so if the input size is n small n and the capacity of your hash is capital n then n divided by n gives you the load factor and it should be less than one it's denoted by lambda and lambda should be less than one to have the constant amount of time in searching okay so in our implementation we are going to keep lambda as 0.5 load factor is 0.5 so if the input size becomes even half of our capacity we are going to increase our capacity or i'll say double my capacity of hash table okay and once you double its size you'll have to rehash all the keys again this is called rehashing so in our implementation, the good thing is we are going to consider both the load factor and rehashing concepts as well so that you give a proper answer when asked in interviews, how does hash map or hash table works? Okay, so here you need to define resize as well. So these are the things that we need to put in our class. Now let's jump to its implementation. Let's first see the complete class, how it is going to look. We'll define class in hash map. And first thing, let's talk about the constructor. So as soon as user writes chain hash map brackets, it is going to call a constructor. You can see here, I have kept the default capacity as seven. 
If user is not passing anything, it is going to create a hash table of capacity 7. User can also say from here, suppose it says that I want a hash table of size 11, then it will create of size 11 here. Okay, so currently I am not passing anything. It is taking the default one. See here what it is doing. It is creating a list of capacity 7. Okay, so what is going to happen internally? It is going to create a list, right? Its capacity is 7. So this work is done. And in all these indices, we have none initialized. Okay. And the second thing is, we also need to always consider about the load factor. For that, we need to maintain the inputs that are coming. Every time when new input is coming, new key value pair is coming, we need to increase the input size by 1. So initially, I am keeping it as 0 as no key value pairs are currently assigned. So two things I did in my constructor. Firstly, we created a hash table. And second thing is, we kept a variable which keeps the value of your input size. Initially, it is 0. Next, I wanted to talk about is hash function. So every time when any key value pair comes, firstly, we'll hash its key, we'll find its hash value. For that, we need to define a hash function. So every time when we'll call hash function, we'll provide the key to it and it will return us the hash value. Now, what is the hash function we are using? We are using a very simple hash function, key modulo capacity, okay? So earlier we were using key modulo 7, 7 was the capacity. So key modulo length of your hash table, okay? This returns this value. So these two things we have discussed. Now the important functions of this class, get item, set item and resize. Let's look at them one by one. Okay guys, now we are going to see how we'll implement set item method. We'll have key and value to set. Now, as soon as we enter in this method, the very first thing that we do is we compute the hash of our key. So key is going to be 10. 10 logic is what we want to insert. So 10 modulo 7, which is going to give us 3. This is the hash for this key. So hashed key now contains 3. After that, you are going to check what is here. Do we have none here? Yes, we have none initially. Now, we need to put a list here of all the key value pairs which are going to map to index 3. So, instead of none, you will create a list here. If your table at index 3 is none, which was earlier the case, then we are creating a list here. This list is to hold all the key value pairs. So we have created a list here at index 3. It will keep all the key and values. For the key and value keeping together, I have created a class. It keeps the key and value passed to it. So it creates an object of type item. So this list is going to be the list of items. Each item is the key value pair. Okay. So initially it has nothing. So this loop will not run. We will directly come here. At index 3, whatever list is there, this resolves to this place, okay? We need to append, in this list, we need to append the key and value, okay? Firstly, we will create an object of item and then we will append it in our list. So now in this list, there is only one item that it contains which is 10 logic. Clear? After doing all the, after doing this append, you need to increase the size, the input size by 1. For the load factor, you always need to keep the track of input size. So you'll increase the size of input as 1. And secondly, you also need to see the input size. If it becomes greater than half of your hash table size, you need to resize your hash table. Okay, so this check is for that. You are checking if your input size is greater than length of your hash table by 2, you are going to resize your hash table uh, by double of its capacity. Minus 1 we have done because we want the capacity generally to be a prime number. And 2 and minus 1, there are chances that it could be a prime number. So that's why we have done 2 
into capacity minus 1. One more thing you want to add is 17 heap. Okay, you have already added this. Now you want to add it. So you will again come in this function. First you will calculate its hash function and it is going to give you 3. So again you need to insert this value here. Now you will check if it is none, it is not none. It has got a list. Okay. So we are going to iterate over this list now. We will keep iterating. Now why I am iterating? Maybe this value, the 17 has already been present with some other value and now you want to update it. So you will keep looping this list. If you find this key somewhere, just update that value with new value that you have now. And return from here. Okay, because the size has not increased and you are not in, uh, adding a new element. You can return from here. But if this is not the case, you will append this new item 17 heap at the end after this. 17 heap. Let's summarize what we did in the set item method. Firstly, we calculated the hash of our key. At that index, we went and we checked if it is none. If it would have been none, we will we'll create a list and put it there, an empty list. Otherwise, we iterate a complete list that was present at that index and we'll see if the key that we want to insert if this is already present if that is already present it means you want to update it okay if that is so you'll iterate it completely if it is not present anywhere you will come out of the loop you have done the iteration you will come out of it and then you will append this new element at the end of your list at that index. Once this, is, this all is done, since you are setting a new value, you are increasing the input size by 1. So you also need to check for the load factor. If load factor, if it becomes greater than half the capacity of your hash table, we resize our hash table and then it would be double the size what was the earlier size of your hash table. Okay, so this all we are doing in the set item. We, we saw in the set item method that we were calling resize method from there if the load factor was increasing from 0.5. So what we do here, we create an empty list first. Okay, we, we have also got the new capacity, the double size capacity here. So we will create new hash table of that capacity. But first, we have created an empty list and then you will start traversing this complete hash table where you have none you will not traverse it but if you have list at any place you will traverse each and every value of it see how you are going to each bucket of your table this is your table you are going at each index in that index you are checking if it is none if it is not none we will go to each item in that bucket okay and that item you are appending in this list so your old will finally look for this hash table as 8a first item, 15b second item, 10. So this is none. So it will not go here. It will come at 3. So 10 logic, third element, 17 heap, fourth element. Okay, you actually inflated this complete hash table into one list. Okay, you kept all these values in a list named as old. Now what you are going to do is you, you will create a new table of new capacity of course. You will initialize now the input size as 0. Okay, why I am doing this? This is the last step. You will you'll pick each item from this old and you will again hash it like here you are doing the rehashing you are using this index operator so you are calling the set item method with this as the key okay this as the key and this as the value so for all these values you will again call the hash function do the complete hashing so at this step you are doing the rehashing okay so when you'll be doing the uh, set item, at that time you'll be increasing the input size one by one. Okay, that's why we have initialized it with zero here. So this is what we do in the resize method.
Okay guys, so the last method that we need to discuss is the get item method. Here we'll have a key and we need to find its corresponding value. So the first thing we always do here is we calculate the hash function for your key. Okay, you calculated the hash function and the result is in hashed key. So you'll go at that index. Suppose you need to search for uh, 17 heap only. So you'll come here. If there you would have none, then you should raise the key error here. Okay, if there is none, you'll raise the key error as there's nothing and we need to find the value over there. There's no list even. Otherwise, if there is a list, then we need to iterate that list. So what we are doing, we are iterating this list now. Okay, for item at that index in the list, we are checking if the key is equals to key. So we'll start from here. We'll check if 17 is equals to 10. No, then we'll come here. If 17 is equals to 17, yes. If item dot key is equals to key, then return the value. So we'll return here heap. Okay. If you would have run this complete loop and you didn't find this value, if the value is something else, you run the complete loop and you don't find it here, it means again you need to raise the error, key error that we didn't find this key. Okay. So that was completely about collision handling with separate chain method. We discussed the complete code. You can also check the complete code at GitHub. I'll provide you the link in the description box. Take your time. Do the complete coding for this. Thank you.